Hi there. So, um, I'm going to have to refilm this whole video and try to make it a little more concise and to the point because my phone was not able to process the version that I made yesterday and um, accidentally deleted a whole bunch of data um, permanently and so I was not able to upload it. So this is going to be how I've been doing my more masculine makeup since now I'm waiting to start testosterone just to kind of try to feel more comfortable um, and a little more visibly masculine while still feeling like myself. This is not makeup that's gonna make you pass in the slightest. Uh, it will work against you in that way, um, but it's makeup that makes me feel good, so. I already have foundation on. Step one, foundation is going to work against you to pass. Especially if people can tell that you're wearing foundation. But it's what makes me feel good. I've been doing things in a very different order than I normally would doing this makeup for some reason. So, also the lighting isn't as good as it was yesterday, unfortunately. Pretty bummed about that, but hopefully we can work with this. To contour, I'm going to use the mostly this lighter shade from the Juvia's Warrior 2 palette um, that's called Kana and a little bit of this warm gray tone called Wazana but I'm just gonna go into Kana first this is an angled little contour brush that is broken but still works so uh, this isn't gonna be any different than anyone else's masculine contouring tutorial. You're just going to go very horizontal, so much so that it, it feels kind of counterintuitive and like it would be wrong, but it works, and then you go down. You can be as light or dramatic as you want. Okay, and then I'm going into that warm brown but I am, or uh, warm gray, but I'm tapping off most of the product because it's really dark and you don't want to overdo it. And I'm just doing that on the deepest part. I do contour my temples to make them deeper, but I don't contour my forehead at all because I already have a really small feminine forehead. So there's no point in making it even tinier. And then contour my jaw a little bit but I find that overdoing that just kind of makes it more obvious that you don't have a super snatched jaw so I'm only going to use the lighter shade and I'm going to blend it out really good. I do use a bit of blush but this is a very like autumnal but light autumnal sort of blush. I have a just a elf um like dense I think it's a foundation brush, but I really like it for blush, and I just do that right on the top of the contour, and that just adds a little bit of warmth and extra dimension to my face. You can definitely skip this step, I just feel like it blends everything together so that it's not too harsh. And then I'm blending all of that out a lot. So now I'm going in and contouring around my eyes with the same taupe shade and a bit of that gray as well and I'm going to lift up my nose bridge a lot because I draw my eyebrows quite a bit higher than where they grow that'll help blend them in and I'll go in more with that later I do like the sort of sleepy dark under eyes and even with the eyeshadow I'm going to be doing which I am actually going to show you quickly how to do that today. Um, I didn't include that in my filming yesterday. And I, I kind of, I'm kind of glad that I lost that data because I, I feel like I was kind of cheating y'all. Because in the intro you see this really pretty blue eyeshadow and then I just show you how I do everything but that. <laughs> so literally all I'm doing is just darkening all the natural shadows of my face which really helps with wearing foundation too. You aren't just going to be like a blank ghost. 
It's so nice that my hair gets in my way now. Remember the whole me shaving my head earlier this year thing? That wasn't indicative of any issues at all. So yeah. Boom. Okay, and the next step for me, oddly enough, is actually my mustache. So I'll take out my septum ring. Boop. And so I use two products. I use a mascara that's not waterproof, so it's pretty easy to fix. This is the Essence Lash Princess. And then I use the Anastasia Brow Pen. This is a waterproof brow pen that I will also be using on my eyebrows. You could just do mascara and eyeshadow. I still do that sometimes, especially when I want to do um, like a blue mustache to match my hair. But I like this because it's a little bit more like hair strokes and it stays a little bit better than the eyeshadow. The eyeshadow can kind of feather out and make me look like I devoured a bunch of Oreos in the break room at work, which is a likely scenario, but not the look I'm going for. So with this very important step is to take your mascara and your mascara wand and get rid of the majority of the product on a clean tissue. Very important for me, especially because I still use this on my lashes as well. And then I'll get nice and personal. I'm going to start where I want the majority of the product, which is going to be kind of in the center of the main mustache area. And I am doing my best to pull the bristles through my actual hair because I do have like blonde and in some spots like a darker blonde mustache hair is because most people do unless you shave it off. Um, I'm just going over my natural mustache area for the most part. And I'm trying to catch those hairs without touching the skin because the mascara will just look like dark blobs on the skin. I can fix it, but it's annoying too. <laughs> so this is where I want the majority of the product. I'm going to put a little bit more in the middle and a little bit out to the sides, kind of bring it down into a very like tiny handlebar shape, but not much. But with anything, you always want to start where you want the most product if anything you're using is liquidy or high pigmented just to make your life a little easier. I do put a little bit in the kind of middle of my lips. People aren't typically entirely hairless there. It's just a lot lighter. And yes, I get called ma'am 80 times a day while walking around looking like this. It's great, it's my favorite. My thought process is always like, do you think I'll do this for shits and giggles? Do you think I just want to look dirty? Because <laughs> I don't. I don't. I want to look nice. Cool. So that's the majority of it laid down. And then I'm going to go in with the eyebrow pen. Make a couple of strokes on the back of my hand so there's not too much product, although I'm kind of running out, so it's not as much of an issue. And then draw some hair strokes, but quickly go in and tap them out with my finger because this is a liquidy product and it dries pretty fast, which is nice, but I don't want them to be too, too dark. So I'm just making little hair strokes that kind of go along with the way my hair grows, which is mostly down and then a little bit more flared out towards the sides, which is pretty typical. This can be kind of an intimidating product to work with on something like a mustache, so you can definitely stick to like eyeshadows and stuff like that in the meantime until you feel more confident. Like. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how I've been doing those fun, bejeweled eyebrows that are definitely not going to help you pass because they are fancy, fancy little gay eyebrows for fancy little gay people. So I'm going to first map out the shape that I'm doing, which I'm going to use some of a black eyeshadow and some of a dark brown on a thin art brush. Meet me. 
the usual. I lick the brush so that there's not as much fallout. And then, so these are segmented eyebrows with a big slit kind of over my iris. And oh, ah, um, I like to draw the inner segment on each side symmetrically first to make sure those are even before I even move on. Even, even. I do not plan on growing my eyebrows out while I am on testosterone. Maybe in a, like after I'm on it for a couple years because I, I am curious to see how they'll grow. If maybe they'll be a little better because my eyebrows suck. But I do just like having drawn on eyebrows. As a form of creativity. So today is Sunday. I had my assessment appointment on Wednesday. And... They were like, oh, we'll get your results back on Friday, most likely, so we can call you then. And once we, like, talk and we get everything, like, confirmed that all your levels are good and we know what our starting dose should be, you can call on the prescription. I was working Friday and I missed the call. It's a very small clinic um, with not a lot of people working there. And... Um, called them back and I was like yeah just let this provider know to call me back whenever and I was checking my phone all day at work which I'm not supposed to be doing I had my volume on I was so stressed about it and 5 p.m. came around they closed and they're closed all weekend now I didn't think I was gonna get to start my hormones before the weekend and I knew they were closed and I need to be shown how to do it so I knew it would be sometime this upcoming week you know, like starting tomorrow. But I just don't even know, you know? Like I saw, I was able to log into the portal and see that my, all my levels are normal. So I don't know why we wouldn't be going forward because I had a very positive response from my provider. I'm gonna start making some hair strokes on this front part. But I have pretty bad anxiety. So I was very depressed and spiraling on Friday. And, I mean, if anything, that really taught me that this was really the right decision, and I'm glad I'm doing it now, because it's clearly really important to me. And I kept telling myself, you waited seven years, you can wait another week, or even two weeks if something comes up. You can wait, you can wait a month or two, you, you can do this, but especially now that I've been presenting more masculine at work, and still just not being treated right at all, honestly, it's, uh, it's wearing on me. So, um... I'm going to go in with this eyebrow pen and I'm going to start where I want the most product. Like I said, always do that and that's going to be on the outer segments and then the bottom line of the inner segment. So anyways, um, I had to really just let myself be stressed out. Honestly, I think I needed to feel those feelings because in a way they were kind of affirming. And then... Um, Yesterday I had an amazing workout. I really enjoyed filming, you know, this the first time around because that's when I did it. Even though it didn't work out technico technologically. Um, I still enjoyed doing it and um, I did some like tapas focused yoga which is where you stay in challenging positions for a long time to build up heat and mental um, fortitude and strength. And whenever you're stressed out, like that kind of yoga, mm, it really helps you work through your shit. And then I had a really great calisthenics session afterwards, even though you really shouldn't do tapas yoga before calisthenics. That's the epitome of doing static stretching before a workout, but I survived. I didn't pull anything. I knew I was putting myself at risk, so I was a little more careful. And then today I feel a lot better. I, like a couple days ago, was contacting like all my friends. I was like, who can hang out with me on Sunday? I'm really scared. I just saw that I'm off work and I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I was like freaking out. And then today comes and I had people I was supposed to hang out with and I just kind of canceled on all of them and was like, 
I want to fix this YouTube video that got fucked up and work out and hang out and be by myself. Start a new Elder Scrolls Online character, apparently. <laughs> Boom. See? So what I do like to do is make sure I've got a couple of hairs that are like sticking out pretty far. Pretty tall, pretty up high up there. I just think that looks nice. It's kind of wild and fun. Cool. So I'm going to clean these up and then I'll be back. Okay. I'm back. Um, I've done segmented eyebrows in the past, but these are very, very much so inspired by um, Is She Hungry or Hungry, the makeup artist I saw, the video that James St. James did with Hungry um, on the Transformation series and was like, Yes, long straight eyebrows going towards the hairline with a big segment in the middle. Yes. Ah. Ooh, yeah, there we go. That side really doesn't matter that much because my hair falls on me. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I've been doing my rhinestone. Well, actually, first, let's make sure that. My little bridge contour actually goes up into where I drew the eyebrows on. Sometimes they're just a little bit higher. Looks like I did a pretty good job guessing where I was putting them though. And then, so I've been using these, I just got an Amazon like multi-pack of um, rhinestones. And uh, I've been using these ones, so they aren't super tiny. They aren't the super chunky ones. They're kind of in the middle of the pack. Um, so they're big enough that some people actually have thought that they're piercings, um, but they're still small enough to be kind of like dainty and pretty. Just the right, just the right, uh, size for me. So, um, I use lash glue, of course. I like the duo brush on one because it's easiest to work with. I'm going to draw just a little line right where I'm going to put these. keep burping because I just ate. <laughs> cool. I'm going to grab a couple of these rhinestones and I'm going to place them so that they're facing up on the back of my hand. And I don't like to wait for my glue to get super tacky so that I have time to move them around if I place them incorrectly. Looks like we lost a soldier. And then I lick the back of my finger or the front, the pad, so that I can pick it up Sometimes I have to still grab it, but it should stick once I get it placed. Well, today it's just wanting to stick to my thumb instead. Not helpful. Okay. Get it facing so that the part that's going to adhere to my face is facing out. And I like to place one kind of high so that it goes a little bit above the eyebrow line. And then the other one, boop grabbed it. We'll go directly underneath it and also just slightly, slightly outside of where the eyebrow starts. I'll go to the other side and I'll be back. Ta-da! Blingy blingy. All right, so some things that I've changed about the way I do my makeup since I've been trying to present a little more masculine is I have been only using enough mascara on my eyelashes to get rid of any powder residue and make my eyelashes dark. Um, I don't use any if I'm not doing a lot of eyeshadow because I don't know, there's something about at least mascara on my eyelashes that's very feminizing. So um, I use as little mascara as possible and I also haven't been doing um, really thin exact eyeliner. It's more like thick and I also feel like except for it's going to be different this time because I like the way that this eyeshadow look that I'm going to do looks but other eyeshadow looks I've been doing um, I pull things down a little bit lower and it's just not as like sharp um, and cat like it's a little more smudgy a little messy and a little thicker um, yeah that's how I've been kind of helping it melt into the rest of everything and feel like it's kind of on theme, I guess. I don't know. So I'm going to show you how I did do the eyeshadow yesterday. So I'm going to take the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Black Bean. I do not like this product by itself. For some reason, this one is so greasy and your eyelids crease like wild. 
don't know why I haven't had that issue with any of the other NYX Jumbo pencils, it's just the shade. But I'm going to put this mostly where I'm going to have um, the eyeshadow I'm going to do, but not. I don't have to go to the very edge because, like I said, or I actually haven't said this yet, but the blue glitter that I'm going to use is actually very pigmented. But yeah, I'm just going to draw this in kind of the general shape. of what I'm doing here, which is just a big cat eye, pretty much a big, sparkly, blue cat eye. That does go over my crease, but doesn't go as high as some of the makeup looks that I do. And then I can just blend out the edges with my hands. You have to be careful because it can blend out pretty far. Just a quick base. And then... I am going to set this with a dark purpley blue eyeshadow from the Mini Masquerade palette. As you can see, it's my favorite thing ever. This is like an indigo purpley blue. I'm just going to set that area so that it doesn't slide around on me. Got my designated blue eyeshadow brush because I do blue eyeshadow so much. Literally just going to pack this blue everywhere that I just put that. Because like I said, it does like to move around on me. And now, the blue glitter eyeshadow. This is Elf. Which shade is this? Oh, it's cute. It's Ocean Eyes. So I can literally just use the applicator and draw it everywhere I want it. I don't even know if I really have to lay down this base. Honestly, it seems pretty solid by itself. Solid enough that I can draw it outside.